What's going on out there, everybody? This is your boy, comedian Marlon Ballard with the Love to Laugh podcast. I'm joined by a very special guest. She still looks the same from Matilda. I want y'all to start clapping for Kiami Dabiel. Yeah. Give it up for her. How you doing? I am doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm, it's, it's an honor to have you on my show. You still out here working, still doing your thing. I appreciate you Thank and you. all of the above. You look great. It's a pleasure. You look, you look amazing. Like you, 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 you about to start working now. What you got going on right now? Man. So on top of, of course, as you know, I still act. Um, I write, I sing, I produce. So I'm working on some projects now. Um, I'm working on my own show that we're getting together, um, which has been a dream of mine for a while. And it's, it's been some work in the making. That's for sure. Some highs and some lows that come with that. However, you know, part of the territory. So we're getting that done. Um, so it's just a lot on my plate. But you know what? I'm grateful because the point was to eat, right? So exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. Um. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna start from the beginning. So you're actually originally from Kentucky. I am. What part of the city? No, I couldn't find what part you were from. <laughs> so I am um, from, so, okay, I was born in Danville, Kentucky. Okay. Okay. Um, however, I am actually, I lived and grew up in a very small town um, called Harrodsburg, Kentucky, which is maybe a half hour, 45 minutes from Lexington, which is where like, you know, University oh. of Kentucky is. So around in that area. Okay. Okay. So were you, were you, um, you were born and were you raised there or did you leave? at an early age? So I was raised there until I was about uh, seven, almost eight. Mm -hmm. And then I moved um, and we moved to California after that, so. Okay, okay. So um, when you were a kid, did your mom was like, she was like, okay, you're a beautiful girl. I'm gonna put you in acting and all that. Is that how it started? Um, so I was a huge, huge, huge Whitney Houston fan, huge, like just, Whitney was like my everything. Um, and so I used to watch her concerts and she would do these concerts for like different troops and things like that, this one in particular. And I would just watch it, know all the words, all the dance moves, everything. And um, then, you know, I tell my mom, I want to be like Whitney Houston. I, I want to be Whitney Houston. And my mom just kept saying, well, no, no, wait a minute. You can't be Whitney but you can be the best Kiami that you can be. And I'm like, but I want to do that. And then when the bodyguard came out, I was definitely sold. I was like, no, that's it right there. That's what I want to do. And she's like, oh, okay. And I remember she told me, you know, that a lot of people would tell her I have or had it, whatever it is. <laughs> yes. Um, so I think that she, you know, just finally was like, you know what, if this is what you want to do, and we had long conversations about it, you know, the sacrifices that that would take, um, and you know, what that would look like. And she was like, so if this is what you want to do, you know, I will be there to support you. Um, and that was pretty much what happened. And so she packed up and we moved to Los Angeles and here we are some Gosh, 20 plus years later. <laughs> 20, plus, 20 plus years, definitely. And I, I look forward to, you know, this this time of year, especially Halloween, because I've been following you for a while and I see so many people dress up like Lavender from, from Matilda and they are dead on, spot on. I'm like, Jesus. Isn't it insane? I'm just like, what? But, and it's so humbling. It is yeah. so humbling. And it's, it's so sweet. And I'm just like, I'm just this, you know, small town girl from Kentucky who just you know was just blessed and I think we're all blessed with that that's something you know what I mean I think we're, yes. we're all blessed with that it's just I was I think blessed to really discover what that was at an early age mm -hmm. however but just to see that it just crosses generations and I mean you know you have these uh, people who have watched this film and now have babies who you know and their little girls are dressing up like me and then they're naming their daughters lavender and I'm just like what like it's just it's incredible it is absolutely incredible and I, I don't take it lightly you have a lot of daughters across the country <laughs> oh, exactly. 
exactly. She's like, wow. But it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I, I am absolutely, absolutely humbled and appreciative. Absolutely. Uh, how was um how was it like you know on set you know when you started filming Matilda? Oh, we had a ball. I mean, it's it's a whole bunch of kids, and yeah. you know that that yeah you know, I'm eight, and I turned nine while I was filming. So you know that's an eight nine year olds like perfect setup. We got yeah. a whole bunch of kids that we get to run around with, and we get to play with, and we get to you know just use all this energy to just cut up. Oh amazing but more on the professional side I learned so much yeah. I learned so much I grew up a lot um, in a short amount of time because even though you are a child this is still a job definitely most definitely and you still have to you know handle yourself accordingly so I definitely learned that um and, you know, my mother was one of those who definitely kept me grounded, you know, because I had those moments when I was on set that I wanted to act like, you know, I might try to run a thing or two. <laughs> and um, being who she is, uh, you know, she yeah. put me to the side and she was like, so you're not going to do that because I'm going to tell you what, time is money, money is time, and you are replaceable. Understand that. Your mom is about and, her business. Hello. <laughs> and she was like, and, and understand that the only diva in my house is me. So I'm going to need for you to go back and act like you have some sense and do your job. And I did that uh, <laughs> and learned quickly. But, you know, it was just and to be able to work with legends. I mean, Danny has been in the business for, I mean, gosh, 50 something years I mean it's incredible Rhea his wife I mean and um Pam the one who played uh Miss Trunchbull yes. she has done so many things as far as like in England yes. and then you have in Beth who played Miss Honey who was in like Schindler's List I mean she goes way back so it was just incredible to be surrounded with so much talent so I learned a lot outside of just having a ball so and, and like, I swear to God, like, I think the whole, you know, collective as a country, if they would have let Mrs. Trunchbull tackle you, I think we all would have cried because we're like, no, she's so sweet. She's so cute. Don't let that happen. And then you jump up and grab the pole. I'm like, oh, thank God. Because I would have <laughs> killed Trunchbull if she would have touched that little girl. Please. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's a classic movie. Like, it's every, I think every child, every child in America has seen that movie and they love it. Eat the cake, Rusey. It's so many. There's so many <laughs> quotable so many moments. Huh? Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And you definitely did your thing in that. And to be relevant still, you know, 20 years later. Absolutely. God has definitely blessed you, definitely. I, I'm telling you, and I I I'm amazed, you know, at times because it has opened so many doors for me and continues to do so. You know, and like I said, I i I feel like I am put on this earth. And my purpose um, in my craft is to at least make one person smile. If I can make one person smile, if I can just, you know, kind of change the trajectory of one person's day by what I'm doing or what I have said or the love that maybe I have shown through my artistry, I have done my job. So exactly. being able to do that over this past, you know, 20 plus years in the game is, is a blessing. Yeah, so. yeah. It is, and did you um when you when you're out in public, do people be like, hmm? you, they give you the finger point? They're like, no, nah, that's not her, and then you like, it's me. <laughs> yeah, they do, <laughs> and then it's those moments where, you know, they'll they'll want to say something, yeah. and they just kind of look at me, and of course now it's a little bit different, you know, because you very careful obviously about where you go and you know of course masked up and those type of situations, but pre. COVID, if we can even remember what that felt like, um, <laughs> right? Um, I would have those moments where, like I said, they would look at me and they wouldn't really say anything, but I can always tell just by, you know, kind of like their body language, the way that they're looking at me, exactly. you know, things like that. And, you know, I'll smile and, you know, there'll be moments where people will finally have, you know, the courage, if you will, yes. to come and, and come and speak. And I'm thinking, you know, you literally don't be afraid. Please don't, because I am just like you. I am a human being, just like you. You know, I go through things just like you. 
a smile, a hurt, a joy, I get scared, just like you. You know what I mean? Um, it's just, I just happen to be on TV. That's the only difference. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. That's really it. <laughs> And, it's, and so. since you're you're a child star, so pretty much you know other child stars, you know, have it kind of kind of different. But you were Matilda, and then like Macaulay Culkin, he just did an interview was like between the the months of October and January, I don't come out the house. He was like because I get swarmed. I'm like, oh yeah, Home Alone, true. Oh okay. yeah, Home Alone. Mm-hmm. He's like he's like this is my season. He's like I don't want to I don't <laughs> want to deal with it. He's like because all people just want me to do is ah. He's like I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't blame him for that. So you have a, a chill fan base. So that is that is awesome. <laughs> I, I do. I do. Because, you know, some, some fans ask you for ridiculous things. They're like, yo, I loved you in the movie. Can you jump up and grab, you know, the ceiling again? If you... I'm, like, I'm not doing that. It was special effects. What are you talking it about? Was. I just have to say, not today. I'm not, not, gonna, I'm not today. I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> if you can just lower the ceiling, I'm, I'll pull up. And <laughs> Hello. We might have something to talk about. But if we can't do that, I, I don't know. That is not hilarious. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, after Matilda, you were in a couple of TV shows, um, In the House, mm-hmm. um, Moesha, the Steve Harvey show. Um, as like, when you were on those shows, of course, you were further in your career. How was it like working on those shows? Amazing. It's, it's still one of the most beautiful experiences because I think that, you know, with each set I'm on, which with you know each job that I do, um, each crew that I get to be a part of, each cast I get to be a part of, I learn something different, and I take you know something from that. And uh, you know, of course, being on in the house, you know, you have LL Cool J, you have Alfonso, yes. who I mean, clearly I've been in the game for a very long time as far as in the entertainment industry and. Um, just being able to to have fun with them. And, and they are those individuals where you have to think on your feet, especially, you know, kind of Alfonso because he's um, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Improv. Okay. Uh, so you have to be very quick. And um, also with working on the Steve Harvey show, same thing. Very, of course, because that's, that's his job. He's a comedian. Exactly. You get it. So, <laughs> so having to just kind of think on your feet um, in the moment is also amazing, amazing training. Um, and it's, it's more of that hands-on. And so just being able to experience that is, is a blessing. It is just something that, you know, you never forget when you take those lessons with you. So... Exactly. So you, you came up around a lot of legends in the game. So you pretty much know how to work with them without being like, yo, that's LL, yo, that's LL. Mm-hmm. So you got your training very well. So that's great. And you can tell when we watch you act, I'm like, yo, she, we, we would think you would be like a classically mm-hmm. trained. You're like, you're like, is she, did she go to school for 30 years with it? Like, you are <laughs> an amazing actor, actress. Okay. I appreciate that. And you're also a writer. You wrote your own short film called Reckless. Tell us about that. I did. I did. Um, So that was, you know, I've always been kind of, of course, in front of the camera. So this was a moment for me to to spread my wings and to try something different and um, to be able to add another element to my artistry. And so this was a, a program that I um, was able to be a part of. And so we were all, you know, very creative based. And um, it was kind of, it was slightly based off of some real life experiences, to be honest. And so I really just sat down and had to put my head down and really make it cohesive, this, this, story that I'm telling it's over a span of years but I had to really condense it and and get to the meat and potatoes of it but it stretched me because it it wasn't something that I had ever really done before um I've written lyrics and you know I've produced music um before and I've helped produce different projects but as far as actually writing something that was not anything that I've ever experienced so it it was challenging because it's it's tapping into a different 
level of creativity. It's tapping into a different portion of my artistry that, to be honest with you, at the beginning, I wasn't sure if I enjoyed. I wasn't sure if that was something that I wanted to add to my resume or add to, you know, who I was as the artist. Um, but as I got more into it and as I, you know, seen my finished product and it was just, I was so proud and I was like, okay, yeah, we had to dust off some some cobwebs and work through some kinks and, and really, really focus. Um, but I enjoyed it and, and it really, it taught me a lot about myself. It, it had, it provided me another level of respect for being in front of the camera because there's a, a certain vision that you have, of course, when you're writing. So then when I'm delivering, you know, the, these writers lines, I can kind of put myself in their position a little bit and, and understand where their vision was coming from when they wrote these words. And so now understanding their vision, it's my job to take them from the page and bring their vision to life through me. So having that experience, like I said, gave me a, a better understanding and a newfound appreciation for writers and what they go through and starting and then scrapping the whole thing because it just isn't flowing the way you want it to. So that was, again, an amazing learning experience. Um, something you know, that I've, I'm continuing to embark on, not as much as in front of the camera and producing, um, but definitely something that I'm continuing to embark on, so. Okay, when you said you wasn't sure that you wanted to, you know, add that title to your resume, were you having doubts? Did you think you wouldn't be able to finish that project or? Yes, and I, to be honest, I wasn't sure if I enjoyed writing like that. Mm -hmm. That was that was the biggest thing. I wasn't sure if that was for me, if, if that part of artistry was my cup of tea. I just, I really wasn't sure. And I'm one of those individuals where I get bored easily. Mm. So for me to have to sit down and say, okay, focus and work on this because I'm, I, I'm an artist so I have words and I have a lot of thoughts and I can see scenes play out and, and things like that but to actually have to sit and say okay focus and and take this what are you seeing and write it I was like man I don't got time for this I don't I don't have time for this I don't have the patience for this yeah. and then I realized no 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 you do you do you absolutely do you want to train yourself to appreciate the individuals that write so that you can act. You, you are going to take this time and you're going to do this and train yourself how to have that patience. So that's what I mean by that. And see, and even though I've never met her, you sound like your mother. Even though you just, <laughs> you quoted a couple of days from her early, I'm like, yo, this, she sounds like a mom <laughs> and I've never met her mom, but this sounds like mom talk that she trained you early on to not you know waste time and get yes. on with your stuff and complete it don't have no incomplete you know thoughts it. she okay. did and I have to say I I am my mother's daughter in a lot of ways <laughs> it's scary sometimes but yes I, I am my mother's daughter she did you know teach me and then also you know to make sure that I'm I, I have to have a level of self-motivation you know because if you're not self-motivated you will continue to just start and stop and just leave things hanging. And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes it's okay to step away and to clear your head. And I did have to do that. But I think that, you know, it's important, especially when you have been given a vision to go back to it and complete it because you never know what can come of that, who that can touch, whose hands that might get into and whose life that can change, your own life that that can change by you just sticking to it and not giving up on yourself, so. Absolutely, absolutely, okay. That's, that's the word right there. We have in church this morning, <laughs> 1025, Kiyami is preaching this morning. <laughs> yeah, I do what I can. Yeah, it's, it's all good, it's all good. So. Um, 
you know, we've been in quarantine, you know, this whole year. Um, what have you been like doing? Like, have you been just, you know, out just, you know, walking the streets or like a lot of people started hiking, you know, doing stuff that they normally don't do. Are you starting to do new things? Um, you know, it's, it's been interesting. It's been different because, uh, and I'm sure as everybody can say, because I am a social creature uh, by nature. So the fact that, you know, you can't necessarily like hop over to your friend's house all the time or go, you know, to the movies or go wherever is, it's hard. It's, it's hard because I, I am just a social person um however i have taken this time to reassess i've taken this time to readjust um you know some things some priorities um and sometimes that even means people in your life you know um because if i think if 2020 has taught us nothing else it has taught us that time is fleeting and that life is precious exactly. so you know, so in, in understanding that, um, I have had to take my social butterfly energy, if that is such a thing, <laughs> and redirect that towards, you know, my projects. Um, and so, of course, we've had to have, you know, virtual auditions and um, virtual meetings and, you know, things like that. And it's, it is different it does take some adjusting because again I'm I'm that energy person um but it's okay you know I've learned that you know sometimes adjustments are are good and change is is good and and I think the hardest part about change is the change itself and being able to embrace it and welcome it so I've had to do that um and I have spent more time you know outside um kind of hiking like you said and, and you know, working out and in those type of capacities, trying to use, you know, some of that extra energy that you have when sometimes you don't necessarily have anything to do. Absolutely. And you're tired of looking at them four walls and you're like, okay, so now what? Okay, I gotta get outside. I gotta I gotta just move my body and you know, um just get some fresh air. But other than that, it's been, you know, just really just reassessing, reevaluating um what's important and uh, making those adjustments accordingly. And what I can do as far as, you know, my artistry and my work um, virtually, um, I do. The moments that I may have to meet up or whatever, we already know is masks and elbow bumps. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, but, but um, yeah, so, you know, just trying to, you know, of course, make sure that I, I stay busy um, and keep, you know, my mind positive and, and stay focused on the things that I can control. So. Absolutely. And I know when this quarantine is over, you have 365 outfits laid out on your bed, ready to go out. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm so ready. <laughs> so this ready. is for January. This is February. This is March. We about to party. Period. Let's go. <laughs> Red D. Like how many premieres do we have? How many um, shows do we have to 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 attend? How many um, exactly. dinners do we need to, to plan? Oh, oh yes, it's going down. <laughs> Yo, it's yeah, going I, down. I, can, I can see you being a social butterfly, and that's hilarious. That's hey, I'm ready to go out too. Ain't nobody ever gonna be home. We we about to be out partying all year. I'm, I'm going to be 29 again. I told people, I'm like, I'm not turning 30 next year. I'm be 29 again. I'm about to live my age again. <laughs> do over. Like, yeah, I'm about to do over this age. Like, so I don't care what nobody says. You're going to be uh, you're gonna be your age again. Hey, stay stay your age. You always going to look like lavender. So, <laughs> so to, 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 to the world, you're still, you know, you're still eight years old to us. <laughs> still. I know. And so it's so funny it is so funny because people will ask me oh my gosh you know how old are you now and I'm like I'm 34 <laughs> and they're like what I'm like I don't know and it's crazy because of course 2021 will be 35 and yeah it's insane mm -hmm. and I'm sitting up there like that's five years from 40 and I'm like where did the time go but yes there's still that that eight-year-old I think that's inside of all of us and you know I nurture her and I, I'm cool with it, so. Absolutely. Oh, I really appreciate you for doing this interview with us. Of course. Um, 
can you tell the people where to find you on social media and everything? Of course, absolutely. So I have um, on Twitter, I am Kiami Daviel. And then my Instagram is official Kiami Daviel. And I am revamping my website. So as soon as that is up and running, then I will definitely make sure that I put that on my IG and my Twitter. So everybody can check that out as well. Absolutely. Okay. I'm gonna wrap this up. So don't hang up after. I'll tell you how I'm gonna post everything. Okay. All right. So um, thank you so much, Kiami, for joining us on the Love no, the Lab no podcast. And you well, are thank you for home. having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining me. So thank you. Um, make sure y'all tune in. Check out Kiami on her social media websites and follow her. Show love. You know, if you have a daughter and dress her up like Lavender, tag her in the picture. She shares them. Um, thank yes, y'all. Please. Thank y'all. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining the Love and Podcast. Welcome. My name is Alan Ballard. Thank you very much. Thank you.